And welcome and hello everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live, or at least the Creative Cloud version for Fridays. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about uh, some new additions to Adobe Stock. And hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Evil Cerise is here. Hello, everybody else. And uh, as we see more and more people coming into the room today, we're going to be talking about some of the new additions to Adobe Stock. Uh, so I see Victoria, I see Heacham, I see more and more friends coming in from around the world. So we give you guys a second to come in. And uh, for those of you who are already here, um, you've heard me talk about Adobe Stock for at least the last couple of years in one form or another. I'm a big fan of Adobe Stock uh, from both the standpoint of being a uh, contributor, meaning I shoot and contribute to Adobe Stock, and also I license images. Um, I do blog posts where I'm, I'm always in need of specific kinds of images that I just either don't have the time to shoot or don't have the subject matter to go and shoot. So <clears throat> I, I love Adobe Stock from both standpoints. And today we're going to be talking about it from the standpoint of not so much being a contributor, but all of the cool new content that can be licensed and used. Um, so let me go ahead and jump in and get started. And we'll talk about uh, two new types of content. Well one new type of content and one addition to an existing type that we already have. <coughs> Sorry for that. Better to get it out of the way now and <laughs> have it not bother me from here on out. All right, so what are we talking about today? We're talking about editorial, which is brand new, and we're talking about additions to premium content as well. So what's editorial content or what's the difference between what's now in the editorial category and what was already there in both regular stock uh, content and of course the premium content. Well, prior to this month, any image that you would license from Adobe Stock would be used in a royalty-free environment. So for example, if I need it, for example, an image of a blog for a blog post of someone walking down the sidewalk uh, I can go search walking down the sidewalk, find the image I want, use it in my blog post. I could use it for a brochure. I could use it in a video. I could use it anywhere, pretty much any way I want it to within you know, the guidelines. Um, and typically, those images that I would find would be people that I don't know. In other words, models, um, strangers, mo people from other photographers that have, you know, they've captured but I wouldn't necessarily be searching for a particular person that I know. I'd be searching for um, a person doing the thing I'm looking for them to do, like walking down the sidewalk. Hey, what's up, Beetle Jace? Uh, Jason Levine's in the house. You guys should follow Jason on his channel. He does video and, and uh, audio content, and he's also talked about stock from a video standpoint. So you can check that out as well. But anyway, um, from an from a royalty-free standpoint, it's usually about people you don't know and places you don't necessarily know or recognize. From an editorial content, it's the exact opposite. It's people you know. So searching for celebrities, people in the news, people that are making the news right now, and uh, the, the use case is different also. So for example, if I were looking to, to rep my new... Um, uh, health fitness club and I wanted a picture of Muhammad Ali to go on the brochure that's not what editorial is for as a matter of fact that's exactly the opposite of what it would be for I can't license the images to promote a brand or service or product so that's not what they're for however if I were doing a news story uh, for my magazine or newspaper or online publication and I wanted that public figure to be a part of that news story, I'm writing about them, and it's not not to promote my own product or so per, per se. That's what editorial content is for. And up until now, you didn't really have access to that type of content through Adobe Stock. Well, luckily, we now have um, over, I believe, a half million images from Reuters with more on the way. We have images from USA Today Sports and more and more and more coming. Now, so that's the editorial side. The, um, the premium side, normally these are curated collections of content from the top photographers around the world. And uh, we just uh, picked up a collection from Stocksy. So Stocksy, S-O-T-C-K-S-Y. 
Uh, Stocksy is uh, has provided us with thousands of, of pieces of content, both uh, images and video, as well as Reuters for editorial images and video for you to license. Now, premium content can be used to promote a brand or a product or whatever. And think of premium content as I'm looking for that extra special image that's not the ordinary everyday stock image. I'm looking for something that stands out above the crowd. I'm looking for something that most people won't have if they're doing the same kind of business or whatever. And I'm willing to pay more for it. That's what premium content usually means. It's better content, but it also costs more. So let me pop over to the computer. I can kind of walk you through this as opposed to talking about it for the next 15 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and show it to you. And um, so when you go to stock.adobe.com, you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, uh, what we're just continuing to build on those categories. So we always had images and videos from day one. Then we added stock templates. So now when you launch Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and I believe Premiere Pro, um, you can license templates um, that are royalty free. We give you a bunch to start off with that are free. You can just use in the product. But if you're looking for a specific kind of template, you can go to that template and find it. Also, if you're an uh, Adobe Felix user, which is the Project Felix is still in public beta, you can license 3D objects to go into uh, Felix to composite into your designs. So those four categories were there prior to June, as well as premium. And premium, if we go there, um, you'll see the addition of the Stocksy United uh, is one of the collections here. And of course, you can just drill down into that and see all kinds of just, again, that next level of stock content that you just kind of don't find everywhere else. So that really top-notch premium, I try not to use the word, but that's what it really is, that premium content. And of course, that premium content comes at a premium uh, price, depending on what it is you're trying to do. But if I were looking for something unique to represent my brand that I just wanted no one else to have, that would be a good place to start. All right, and then last but not least, of course, is editorial. And when we go to editorial, you will see just those awe-inspiring uh, images captured from around the world of things that are going on in the world today. Not all happy, by the way. Some are very sad. But if you were doing a story on um, any of these things and you needed that content, uh, this would be now one place you can get it. And of course, there are rules that are, you know, make um, editorial content different than all the other categories we just talked about. So um, it would be best if you were, if you were, had questions about, well, can I use an editorial content or piece of content for this or that? It's best to go through the FAQ, which pretty much answers all the questions of what you can and can't use it for. All right, so I'm gonna take you through a use case and show you how this all works. Um, I'm gonna do it through the Adobe products though. I can do it from the website, but I think it'll be more impactful if I show it to you from, um, from within inside the products themselves, which is where it really shines. So for example, uh, let's pop over to Adobe InDesign. In Adobe InDesign, now this is just, again, my hearing what's going on in the news today. I understand that Shark Week is coming up and Michael Phelps, Olympic swimmer, has decided to race a shark. I'm kind of thinking how I know that's going to come out, but that's another story. But let's say I was doing a magazine piece on Shark Week and I wanted to talk about this whole thing that's coming up. And of course, I'm going to want a picture of Michael Phelps to go in it. That's the whole point of editorial content. I won't, usually I probably won't find him. I go search for images on Adobe Stock. I'll find swimmers. I'll find people that are actively swimming with goggles on. That I could kind of say, yeah, this is what it might look like. But if I wanted an actual picture of Michael Phelps that I could use for my story, that's where editorial content comes in. Okay, so I'm in InDesign. Now, right off the bat, uh, I just grabbed a, a, a stock image of a shark, but that's not really, and I show this to, let's say, my, my um, art director. My art director is, yeah, that's a nice picture of a star shark, but it really doesn't really showcase what we'd be looking for for Shark Week and a race. 
So let's find a better image for this. Uh, so again, I've got the frame selected now. I can go over to my, I can go to the web and do it, but it's much easier to do it from the CC libraries. So you can go to any CC library, and if you go in the search bar, by default, the search bar searches for Adobe Stock. Now you can do it to have it search in your own library, but by default, it's gonna search for Adobe Stock anyway. So if I do shark, it will start to bring up images of sharks. Now, if and again, these are uh, it, it's bringing up results from Adobe Stock. I, I have the photo category chosen, and it's kind of finding images of sharks. These are the everyday um, stock images I would expect to find if I search for sharks. But what if I were to go ahead and just just for giggles, click on Premium and turn off photos. And you notice how just right off the bat, even with uh, the first couple results, especially this one, you get that next level of wow photo. Like that's like at eye level on, you know, under the water with the shark. Now, in other words, not the kind you would get from the aquarium. <laughs> These are like d professional divers going out and collection, collecting that next level of shark image. So if I wanted to uh, get one of these, I could. But um, there is one advantage to going to do it from the website. You notice that my design is a vertical design, and it means I'm, I'm working with a, a, a tall page. So while I could find images here, and there's one that's tall, and that one could work. Matter of fact, that's not a bad one. I could use that one. Um, I will show you one advantage that we would have if I were to go do it from the website, and that is the filters. We don't haven't integrated the filters. Um, into the CC library panel as well as they are on the website. So if I go to the premium collection and I type in shark and hit enter, it will start to find my shark images, same ones, so I get the same results. But now I could come over here and say, you know what? I'm looking for, under orientation, I'm looking for vertical. So just show me the vertical images. That way I'm not wasting time looking at the other ones that aren't vertical. So now I get some, and again, I would have found these had I gone and scrolled through and looked through the panel, but this way I'm able to quickly narrow it down to just the ones I want. Now, if there is a particular one that I like better, um, and I see a couple, I'm just trying to decide which one I want. It's usually in these first couple of results. I like that one kind of underneath, but I also like this one too. And that one. I like those three. That one, that one, well, actually, that one and that one. Now I'm going to pick this one. So, and, I, and I'm still not deciding yet. I'm just kind of previewing. So, you notice I can go in and I can say uh, save to a library. So, I can save it to that exact same library that I was just in. And let's say I like this one too. I can go here and say, you know what? Save a preview of that uh, to the Adobe Live library. And that way I get my two top favorites. I can go ahead and add as many as I want, but I get those added in uh, quickly and easy. Now, if I go back to InDesign, um, those previews are, if I get out of the search, there you go, get out of the search, those previews are now there. So those previews are there. I haven't licensed anything, haven't paid for anything yet, but if, I'm, if I want to test them out and see which one I like better, all I have to do now is drag them in from the panel. And um, InDesign, if I click now, it's just going to place it, but I want it to kind of replace the one that's already there. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key instead. That's an InDesign secret. Hold down your Option or Alt key, and when you click, it will then replace the one that was there with the one you just put in. And um, looking at that one now, that's kind of cool. Let's try this one instead, see if I like this one better. Hold down the Option or Alt key to replace it. And I think I'm liking that one better. I would just move the text up. So let's go ahead and move the text out of the way. And yeah, that's got that awesomeness of a shark <laughs> coming right at you. That would be the one I want. Now, haven't licensed it yet. I can show it off to my... Um, to my art director or client or whoever is going to be, um, well, in this case it would be for a news story. So in this case, my art director or editor to see if this is the one they want to use for the cover of the story. And if that were the case, uh, then at any point, all I'd have to do is come here, 
to license it. So you notice there's a little shopping cart in the upper right hand corner of InDesign or of an InDesign selected image. When you place the preview, you can always license it right there on the spot. So if I do license this or choose to license this, it's gonna come up. It's probably gonna give me a price in this case because I don't think I have any premium credits just yet. It's gonna tell me how much this image costs. So I could do a small or a large version. I'm an online publication, so I can do a small version, probably get away with that. And then it's gonna give me the price. So uh, to purchase this image, this is a premium in image. So again, this comes with that premium price of 250 bucks. Now, premium prices vary image by image. This one's $259 or $249. So if you wanted a cheaper one, you could get one that isn't as awesome, <laughs> but if you want that premium next level content, that's what you would be able to do. All right, so now that I've gone, gone and done that, let's talk about editorial. So let's go down to the page where we'd be talking about Michael Phelps. That's not Michael Phelps. That's uh, a previous image from this layout that I, I um, repurposed. So I also noticed in this particular layout that this is actually a frame on top of a frame. There's this dark gray frame on top of that, kind of just making that darker. So there, he's actually in a frame underneath. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, command click. That will cycle through the frames that are um, selected um, and or stacked on top of each other and now I've got the one selected underneath so at that point I could replace it delete it whatever I want to do so now let's go ahead and search for Michael Phelps Michael Phelps, and I'm not gonna see, so premium found nothing because there's no premium or images necessarily probably with his name in it. But if I go to editorial, I will find editorial content with Michael Phelps in it. So I can find those images that I'd be looking for that are actually images of Michael Phelps. So at this point, I could find him um, <clears throat> pretty much in or out of the water. And if I wanted to filter it based on vertical images, I would just go do the same thing, go back to the website and filter based on vertical images. But if I see one in here, I kind of like, I see, I've seen a couple. I kind of like that one, that's cool. That one also looks like it would be vertical if it, if, if yeah, it's vertical. Um, so at that point, I could go ahead and just drag this one right in. So if I drag it right in, again, it gives me the same placement I can hold down my Option or Alt key and click it into that frame below. It's very, very tiny. So let's go ahead and scale that up. Fill, fill frame or fill, fill the frame, fill, <laughs> fill the frame, um, fill the frame proportionally. That's the word I was looking for, proportionally. So we got our image in there. It's still got that dark tone on it. Again, that dark tone is optional. That's what the image really looks like. So if I like the dark tone, but maybe that's a little bit too dark, all I have to do is select it, and I believe they're just using a black box with lower opacity on it. So maybe something more like 50% um, or 45%. Okay, so now, if that image is one that I like and the editor agrees that that's one we should be using, then I can right-click on that, or not right-click, but just select it, go up to the shopping icon there, click on it. I think I do have editorial credits. So let's go ahead and license this image. And we'll go ahead and choose, uh, again, we'll choose a small version of it. Of course, the smaller version is usually gonna be cheaper than the larger one. Oh, I thought I had editorial ones for this one. Maybe not. All right, but this one's 50 bucks if I decide to purchase it. Um, let me go try something here real quick. Let's go to editorial. And depend, I guess it depends on the collection it's coming from. Michael. Oops. And let's go find. And let's now let's go ahead and do a vertical. So that'll filter down to only the vertical ones. And let me see if I can grab one of these. Okay, yeah, I thought I had a credit. So let's go ahead and uh, use the credit in this one. 
And um, I'm just going to go ahead and save it to Adobe Live. And let's see if I can license that other one as well. It might not be picking up my credits from the, uh, from the app. All right, here we go. Do this one too. I think this was the one I had chosen before. There we go. Preview has been saved. Now let's see if I can license this one. Yep, using my credit, great. And we'll save that one to Adobe Live as well. So now I have licensed both of those uh, using my existing credits. And so if I head back to uh, InDesign, those should now be in my library. And I should have the unwatermarked version of those now. All right. Let's get out of the search. Still says, not licensed, let's try it one more time. Normally you only have to license it once. <laughs> okay, there we go, finally. And don't worry, it did not take any extra credits away from me. It's just something getting stuck with the licensing today. All right, and so it recognized the link from the other one. Picked that up, got rid of the watermark, gave me the high res version of it in place, scaled everything, so I don't have to do it all over again. Typically, what would happen is if I were to go to any other site and buy this kind of content, I'd have to download it from the site, download a JPEG, go find it in my download folder, put it where I really want it to be, and then drag it in or relink it and potentially losing any updates or edits I've done to it. In this case, it licensed it in place, although I had to do it through the back door from the library panel. Should be able to do it on the canvas. And it was able to go ahead and replace it and remove the watermark and give me the high res version of it right here on the spot. Okay, so we've got our shark, um, our potential shark. Depends on if we wanna pay for that premium image or not. That's up to the editor. And we've got our Michael Phelps in place. We've got a second one to use just in case. So if we come down here and we replace um, this one, again, this is now gonna be about Michael. And we make that frame a little bigger. And get that in place. And we've got a frame here and same thing. We can go ahead and drag in this other one that we didn't use. We used that one before, so we'll use this one this time. And hold down our Option or Alt key and just go ahead and replace that image. And of course, we would go ahead and fill the frame proportionally so it fills that up. Now, in this case, the text that's here Kind of hard to read that on top of the black uh, swimming cap. So let's go ahead and switch that to a different color. Let's go ahead and make that white so we can see it. And I, I kind of don't want it up there now that I see it because it looks like it's actually on the cap itself. I also don't want it on his mouth. So maybe this might be that case where, you know what, it's not going to be centered on, it, on the image anymore. It's just going to be off to the side. Let me move that up a bit and there we go. Okay. There we go, it looks much better. All right, so now we've got our editorial images in. The only thing would be left now to do is, of course, go write our story. <laughs> because again, the whole point of using these images for editorial use is that we're doing a story about this. Uh, is there a benefit to using InDesign over Photoshop for this type of work? Yes, in, InDesign is a page layout application. In other words, magazines and newspapers don't lay out magazines and newspapers in Photoshop. That's way too much work and effort. Page layout programs are for page layout work. If I were just designing a one page or one frame thing, then I could do it in Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. But if I'm laying out a 100 page newspaper, trust me, I'd kill myself before it. I would not want to do it inside of Photoshop. <laughs> it would be a lot more work. Much easier to do it in InDesign. All right. and. Um, yeah, you can definitely try, uh, Nate, you can definitely try the images in line, see if they're what you want. Because, again, trying it in line helped me pick between the two shark images as to the better one that I, that I would want to use. 
Um, all right, so if we, again, want to continue down this path, we would just keep going. So, for example, rinse and repeat. If I draw another image frame here, and on that image frame, we're going to want uh, another picture of Michael Phelps, perhaps maybe swimming. And let's do search again. And we're just looking for editorial images. And I saw a nice one in here where he was swimming. Yep, that one. And I can go ahead and say, you know what? I just want to preview that one. Not ready to buy it yet. Just go ahead and pop that one in the frame. And actually, I like the way that fits the way it is. So we'll just go ahead and bring that one in. And we'll go ahead and say, fit the frame to the content. There we go. Perfect. All right. And you know what? There probably, I'm going to take a wild guess here, there might be some nice editorial sharks. Let's see what we find out. If we just do a search for sharks, and we're doing editorial search on sharks, we're not going to get that primo content, but we are going to get sharks, you know, maybe that we're using news stories. Sharks that were caught. Oh, that one's okay. That one's okay. I don't know. Has anyone ever done a shark race before? You know what? Let's, let's see. Perhaps there was another story on a shark race. Oh, the team. <laughs> the sharks. <laughs> And that's what you would expect in editorial content. So, nope. The hockey team. San Jose Sharks, I believe. All right. That's probably going to be about the best one that I've seen so far. Let's grab that one. There we go. And we'll go ahead and put that in. And we'll fill the frame with that one. Fill the frame proportionally. There we go. And again, if I like that image, editor approves it, then we can go back out. It already put it in the library. So even when you do a search and just drag it onto the canvas, it still saves it to your library, whether it's whether you purchased it or not. So that preview image is in my library, ready for me to decide if I want to purchase it or not. So uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll license it right here in the library. It you know, should ask me if I want a small or large version of it. And I'll take a small one. And this one I don't have a credit for, so that one will be another 50 bucks if we decide to buy it. But that's how you would license it right there on the spot. All right, so editorial and premium content now available to you inside of um, your Adobe products or just in Adobe Stock on the web in general. All right. Any other questions? If you got anything. Thanks for loving my work. I appreciate you. Cheryl. And we'll switch back out to the website. So peruse the content, peruse the library, see what you like. Um, again, you can always also become a contributor to Adobe Stock. So if you kind of like say, hey, I got images that are good. Why aren't my images there? They can be. You can sell your own images um, via Adobe Stock, and I've done previous streams on how that all works. But today, it's mainly about the premium content and the editorial content, and that premium content being sourced now from Reuters, Pond5, um, I'm, no, I'm sorry, premium content from Pond5, StockC, and there's several others, but I'm trying to think if there's any off the top of my head that I can remember or come up with, but all kinds of different collections that are here. Um, so check out the premium content if you're looking for that next level of image for your project. And of course, if you're doing editorial pieces, um, you now know, don't have to look any further to find great relative and current editorial content from the top names in the business. Reuters, um, Sports Illustrate, I'm sorry, um, USA Today Sports, and others. So more to come. 
the library just keeps getting bigger and better. So we started, I believe, with like 40, 45 million images, and now we're over 90 million. So in a short amount of time, doubling. All right. Can I check if, I, if, if Adobe Credit's available without trying to buy one? Um, can I check if I, yeah, when you, go to, when you go to buy an image, it will ask you to use one of your credits if you have a credit for that type of image. So you don't have to buy any images, to, or you don't have to buy any credits to see if you have any. Um, also, it will tell you your credits in the upper right-hand corner. So you can see I've got a thousand image credits, but just because I have a thousand image credits doesn't mean it's for all types of images. So for example, the premium images, I don't have any credits for at this point because those premium images cost so much more, uh, we don't just you know, have those lying around. <laughs> um, also video, I don't have video credits. Jason probably has video credits, but I don't because uh, I don't license enough video content to warrant it. Uh, so that's what, that's what it is. Um, yeah, and I just, uh, so yeah, I just pointed out in the upper right hand corner, you'll see if you have credits without having to try and buy one. All right, so if you don't see any credits up there, then probably don't have any. And if you see credits there, it doesn't necessarily, it's probably just for images, unless you specifically bought credits for the other types of content. All right, with that said, I think we covered all the things we wanted to cover today. And um, glad that you guys uh, were here today to take a look at the uh, what's new in the premium and editorial content and creating engaging pieces um, using this content for your next editorial or premium type um, project. So with that said, take care. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Have a great weekend.